Allah listens to the one that praises Him. We have the assurance that our Lord and Cherisher, our Creator, who is closer to us than our jugular veins, as the Holy Quran testifies, that we are indeed closer to you than your very life veins. We stand up with the assurance that He listens to our prayers, He listens to our secret thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, and with that assurance we arise some and from that position, we say, Allahu Akbar, and we go into prostration sujood, and we do it. We go into the sizda, demonstrating. We said, look, we'll demonstrate, we demonstrate, down to the ground, forehead touching the earth. As in that position, we say, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, which means glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest. The highest part of man goes down to the lowest before his maker, and we praise him to the highest. This is the form of our prayer. And this is also biblical. Meaning, this is according to your book, your kitab. Because this is how all the prophets pray. This is how all the prophets prayed. And when you say that, it sounds like a sweeping generalization. I said, look, it sounds like a sweeping generalization, but it is not so. If you have been reading your own holy scriptures, your own book, you will be able to confirm what I'm going to quote you now, and I quote from the Old Testament in the Bible, the Old Testament, Kitabul Kadim. That's the title. That's what they say, Old Testament. In the Old Testament, it reads, And Abraham fell on his face and prayed to God. And again, And Moses and Aaron fell on their faces and prayed to God. And again, And Joshua fell on his face and prayed to God. When we come to the New Testament, I say we read that towards his last days on earth, Jesus Christ, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples, and he said, Wait and watch. Look out, be careful, keep guard. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. See, there we demonstrate. And he went a little further and fell on his face and we fall on our faces. Sujud. And getting up, he said, and prayed to God. Oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me, meaning remove the difficulty from me, but not as I will, but as thou wilt. In the end I leave it to you. Oh my Lord, I want you to save me. But as a Muslim, he submits his will to the will of God. As a Muslim, he made the sujood. So we are asking, how does a man fall on his face and pray? Except the way we Muslims do. Is there another way? Can a circus acrobat do any better than that? No, he can't. So, he said, you see, while the man is scanning in his head, he says, no, there is no other way. So I said, look, this is how Abraham and Moses and Aaron and Joshua and Jesus and Muhammad, this is how they humble themselves before the Lord. And we are not ashamed to do likewise. But the modern gentleman, referring to him, but the modern gentleman is more worried about the creases on his trousers than humbling before God. No going down and all that, you know, the creases will get spoiled. <laughs> I said, you see, the Americans today are spending millions to learn what they call transcendental meditation, a word two years long. They are learning this from the Hindus, transcendental meditation. I say a word two yards long from the Hindus and they are paying thousands of dollars in the process. I says, all that transcendental medita meditation in Islam, you get it free of charge. We want to share it with you. Now, the one that we worship, we call him Allah. The one before whom we humble ourselves, we call him Allah and Muhammad is not our Allah. This is what they're thinking. They're thinking we worship the Holy Prophet Muhammad 
we have to explain to them that Muhammad is not our Allah. He was a man like any other human being, born of a woman. And the Bible tells us in the book of Job, chapter 25, verse 4, it says, how then can man be justified with God? How can you compare any human being with God, with Allah? How can he be clean that is born of a woman? Anyone that a woman carries for nine months, he is not even clean enough to be compared with Allah. Compared to us, they are great. They are like the towering peaks of the Himalayas, the prophets of God. They are like the towering peaks of the Himalayas. We look up to them with love, respect and reverence. But we say, what is the Himalayas compared to the heavens? Nothing. Nothing. 29,000 feet. When Hillary and Tenzing, when they went, they climbed the Himalayas, they said they conquered the Himalayas, it was world news. Achievement. 29,000 feet. What is this 29,000 feet compared to the heavens? Nothing. Likewise we say, the prophets of God compared to us, they are very great. No comparison. There is no comparison between us and the prophets of God. We don't compare ourselves with Ibrahim alayhi salam, or Musa alayhi salam, or Daud alayhi salam, or Isa alayhi salam, or Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi salam. No, no, no. There is no comparison. But compared to God Almighty, what are they? Nothing. Compared to us, we are nothing compared to them, and they are also nothing compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I says, this is how we respect and we, we estimate. No comparison. And the one that we worship, we call him Allah. And why Allah? We will now hear the azan. And after the azan, I will explain to you how we explain the azan to the people. And then we are going to make isha, as the brother will announce. You know, we'll make it a little late. We will continue as the brother will explain. If you will explain how we are going to arrange after the azan. So, what is the arrangement? We'll continue after the azan. Yes. And the, uh, the prayer is going, inshallah, is going to be after the translation. And the Salat al Isha will be after the translation, inshallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah Fala 